Okay, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here and uh, we're back with a tournament replay uh, analysis type video, you know, the same that we've been seeing a lot of. I know I've been doing them pretty much constantly. Uh, I just have a huge reservoir of them and of course, as I mentioned, I just don't I just can't record live for the for a couple more days because of my work schedule. But we'll be back to live content and tournament replays in a couple of days. Uh, so just bear with me. I hope you guys are enjoying these. I have been having a lot of fun uh, recording and uploading these, and uh, I hope you hope you are as, uh, having as much fun watching them as I am uh, making them. So uh, before we get started, you know, typical stuff. Uh, if you guys do enjoy this type of video, please leave a like. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, it would mean uh, so much to me. It just lets me know that what I'm doing is working, uh, people are enjoying it, and uh, I'm pumping out good content. Uh, if you have any sort of questions, concerns, feedbacks, critiques, definitely critiques, of course, uh, or anything at all, uh, feel free to put that in the comment section. I read all the comments. I reply to pretty much every single comment. Um, I love discussing stuff. So feel free to put that in there and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing we are so so very close to the hundred and or sorry the 200 subscriber goal that I set for myself uh, for the month of January so I would really appreciate if you join me as we continue to grow and uh, yeah I'm pumping out one two videos per day of Pokemon showdown related content competitive Pokemon content so yeah I think we'll leave it at that this is uh, my round one match of the NU league versus my opponent uh, her to do so I know her to do is a pretty well-known player, a pretty strong player. Uh, they're from France, I believe, or they are at least French. I don't know if they live in France, but uh, they are playing against us in Little Cup World Cup, so I've seen them play there. I know they're pretty good at RU. I think just overall they are a solid player. So I knew my round one match was going to be tough, and uh, I was in for a challenge. I was definitely, definitely looking forward to it. I wanted a good set of games, and I think we got a good set of games here. We can definitely analyze a lot uh, in, in these games. So Let's jump right into it. So uh, this team was given to me by Toggy. I don't know if they actually built it or not, or because I, I think it's Danny's team that he he used for uh, NU Snake Draft. I just don't know if Toggy was the one who built it or not. Toggy passed it to me, etc. So pretty standard type of build, or at least looks standard. Uh, Rhydon, Talon uh, is a pretty tried and true core can't really go wrong with this kind of defensive core right on talon vaporeon and serena uh firewater grass core with stealth rocker really can't go wrong pretty solid i would say across the board the uh drapeon is actually scarf uh scarf drapeon so that's a pretty cool set i don't i think it's becoming a little bit more popular nowadays uh, but it's still not super common i still think sd is the more common and uh more common set and the last slot we have is sylveon sylveon's actually a spec sylveon uh, which uh, looks pretty good into this matchup, you know, like if I can fire off hyper voices, obviously uh, her to do my opponent does have a couple of resists right here, talent and Togedemaru, but I can't imagine that they take these extremely well, especially if this is Scarf Togedemaru, as I'm expecting. It's either this is Scarf or this is Scarf, but it makes more sense for this to be SD and this to be Scarf. Um, and then yeah, talent flame could potentially take it well, but I'm not expecting it for it to take it that well. Uh, in terms of threats on the opponent's team, SD Drapion definitely looks threatening, uh, considering that the only thing that I have to outspeed it is my own Drapion and my Talonflame. I know I need to save these uh, early on to make sure I can revenge kill that and beat it. Executor is an interesting Pokemon. I don't really have a great special switch in. Uh, Sylveon doesn't really count. We're going to see early on. Um, so yeah, that thing is definitely threatening. Um, so I have to kind of play careful around that. So let's let's just jump right into it. In terms of leads, I'm leading off with Drapion uh, for a couple of reasons. Basically, I don't want to lead off with... <laughs> I want to lead off with Rhydon really badly, um, but I'm scared that my opponent just leads off with Ex Executor because Executor actually matches up fairly well. So I'm going to lead off with Drapion to catch that just in case because anything else doesn't really want to take Draco Meteor or Leaf Storm and I have to like switch around it. I don't like that. I don't, I'd rather just start off with my Drapion, scare that thing out, get a nice knockoff off. Anything else that my opponent can lead off with, I can switch into relatively well. Um, Togedemaru, I can go into my Talon and uh, let my opponent, or, you know, Risk the, risk the burn chance. Talent of their own, I have my ride on for. Uh, Muds, I have Vapo plus uh, Serena and uh, Vaporeon, I have Serena and Drapion. I'm actually kind of cool with the Drapion Drapion matchup because I need to get chip on that so that way my Talent can knock it out with Flare Blitz later. So I need to Scarf EQ or whatever I need to do. Uh, I'm okay with it. So um, yeah, that's going to be the lead of choice. I'm expecting for my opponent uh, probably. 
um, executor, right? So I'm gonna go with Drape. We're gonna see Talonflame come out and turn one. I'm Scarf Drapion. I can get the knockoff on this thing immediately. And I was thinking about it, but I was like, you know what? First of all, I don't want to reveal I'm Scarf yet because I think it could come in handy later. It's not like I'm going to kill this Talonflame. And although knocking it off would be really beneficial for me, uh, I think that they have other opportunities later in the game to knock this thing off. And I also do not want to risk a burn uh, on my Drapion turn one because that makes my opponent's Drapion so much more more threatening. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to double. I'm just going to switch out of there. I'm going to go right into my ride on. I know I can take any one hit. My opponent's going to make the smart play and go for a U-turn. And this means the executor comes in. And uh, I got a little lazy here. Um, I thought this was like specs. I just like ex expected it to be specs and did that much with Leaf Storm. 50% is a good chunk, but it's not like Specs Sylveon is that bulky either. So I was expecting this thing to be choice locked in some capacity as uh, the Leaf Storm is going to come out. And um, I'm going to double actually. I'm going to double into Rhydon because I was like, you know what? I want to get up my rocks more so than firing off a hyper voice i was expecting my opponent to probably just go into talonflame or togedemaru i didn't think they would risk what is a pretty obvious spec sylveon they shouldn't it didn't show leftovers it took 50 percent from that leaf storm um i didn't think they would go into drapion on that because this would just light it up but either way it works out as i can go into ride on and just set up my rocks here pretty comfortably and start chipping away at my uh, opponent's team so i'm gonna go hard into sylveon again it might seem a little weird but i was like you know my opponent's definitely gonna draco this time around because my talon flame is so obvious so i'm just gonna go into sylve on the Dra on the on the draco and i was expecting a double draco because i was like i already have rocks up i already have um Rocks up. I made a couple. I made a double like really early on. Uh, I'm definitely putting the pressure on my opponent's team. I, I feel like they're gonna try to double Draco. They actually just don't reveal to be choiced. I thought they might have been choiced in some capacity. Um, obviously not. If I actually calc the damage, I would have noticed that. So that's on me. I was playing a little. I'm a little rusty. I'm not playing super smart. Um, and I'm gonna get pretty lucky with a, a Leaf Storm miss, uh, kind of bailing me out here. As I'm just gonna hyper voice connect and knock out this Executor. So definitely lucked out a little bit there. I'm not gonna deny that. Um, but I still think I play the rest of this uh, set cleanly, uh, or at least the rest of this game cleanly. So Drapion's going to come in. This thing is a threat. I do not want to mess around with this. I'm just going to go hard into Rhydon and take a knockoff. And uh, I don't notice the item here. I thought for some reason this thing was a Choice Scarf. Um, just I didn't, I didn't notice Black Sludge. So again, playing really, really just sloppy because um, I'm gonna make some weird plays later on that like just make no sense so I'm gonna uh, ride on I know I know this thing is like switching out I don't think you ever stay in and Mudsdale is like the most obvious switch in here so I'm just gonna double into Serena and take this as an opportunity to knock off if I can knock the Muds I'm obviously looking to knock the Talon but I also I'm fine with knocking the Mudsdale that's just gonna help me chip it down in the grand scheme of things so knocking this thing off is great my opponent's just gonna throw up rocks here or sorry throw off a toxic here and at this point, I'm just going to double knock because I know the Talon Flame is definitely going to come in on this turn. Or no, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm going to Power Whip on this turn. I think I double knock later. Um, as I'm going to Power Whip here, um, miss, not a huge deal, and just go right back into my own Talon Flame because I know my opponent's not going to just Brave Burn into a Rhydon. Just, it just doesn't make any sense. If anything, they're going to Will O Wisp or U turn. And I was like, let me just go into my Talon Flame and prevent uh, my opponent from getting too much momentum. And uh, I want to bait in that Mudsdale because I want that thing. Uh, toxic and starting to get worn down because if you're looking at it my ride on actually looks amazing EQ from this thing is super free now without the ex with the executor out of the picture so getting a toxic off on the Mudsdale is really nice I am gonna have to give up rocks but I always know that my Serena has a pretty safe um, rapid spin uh, on this Muds as Talonflame is gonna come in I am not afraid of this talent. I'm fine with playing with rocks for a little bit, and I'd rather get the knockoff off on this thing rather than just spinning away rocks that are going to come up later anyway. So getting the knock here, I'm happy with that. It means this talent flame becomes less of an issue for me long term as I'm going to go hard into ride on on a roost. And at this point, I know my opponent never stays in. Uh, you can never risk that, and I can very comfortably just fire off an earthquake. And I am fast, adamant, right on, so I know that I can just run up, run up another Earthquake, knock this thing out, unless it's like super fast Vaporeon, which I wasn't expecting, um, depending, you know, based off of that damage, uh, I can pretty comfortably just go for, uh, just go for the, uh, whatever you call it, double EQ and knock this thing out. So my opponent goes into Drapion, and I just don't have, an, I don't have an explanation for this. I thought it might be Banded 
draping on or something i don't know what i was on so i'm gonna go into my <laughs> serena on the earthquake and then i'm gonna die to a poison jam and i'm like okay i just messed up big time because uh, now my ride on actually is in range potentially of earthquake after rocks so i had a perfect opportunity just to knock this thing out with earthquake and i got the play wrong like completely and <laughs> i just <laughs> I don't know, I have no explanation. I played this first set super sloppy, I'm not even going to deny it. Um, as now I'm going to go into my own Drapion, my Scarf Drapion, I'm just going to fire off an EQ. Scarf EQ, honestly, starting to look really good as well, like with this Mudsdale out of this picture, with the fact that this Talonflame doesn't have its boots anymore, uh, I'm in a fine spot to just go into Vaporeon on the Muds. Drapion is going to come in. Uh, I don't want to mess around with this thing. I could, I'm just going to go hard, I think, into my own Drapion. I, I think what a better play is in this situation is uh getting scald chip off on this thing because it's never going to be able to speed up so it would have been more valuable to just scald chip this thing down sack the sylveon the next turn <clears throat> and then go into my own drapeon and then scarf eq definitely knock this thing out uh after or at least get it in range uh as you can see it is 57 percent so um if my vaporeon got a burn obviously this thing would be neutralized but um i would be able to at least like chip this get sylvia out of the picture um and then just go into it's not like sylvia is very important to win this game anymore so i can just go into talent afterwards and knock this thing out which is exactly what you see here so i am going to go into my talent flame here i'm just gonna scare this thing out with the potential for flare blitz my opponent's gonna go into mudsdale and uh flare blitz away here my opponent goes into toga tomorrow i didn't i didn't understand this play i thought it didn't make any sense to me. Um, I thought they were always going to U-turn here because I have a perfectly fine ride on to switch in on this thing. And if I, if my opponent goes uh, Zing Zap into Ride On, then I just kind of click EQ or Stone Edge. I just click Stone Edge and just like pick up a kill. So I didn't think my opponent would do that. I think maybe the better middle ground at this point was just to just sack the Sylveon. Um, instead of just like taking this risk where I just actually roost on the... Uh, I think I just roost on the uh so I, on this turn I went to I went for roost on the on the flinch and now I'm in a really weird spot I was like shoot what do I do now he knows I know that he's scarf and basically I'm just gonna make a call out and just gonna go for the double roost expecting my opponent to double switch um because he's gonna expect me to go into into ride on this time around so that's exactly what we see here I'm just gonna go for the roost and I get that play right and I can very comfortably now just fire off a Flare Blitz. Um, as Togedemaru comes in, I'm going to knock that thing out and I'm going to win the game. So I make the double roost play. I get, I get the dub there, um, but definitely just sloppy altogether. No other really way to put it. I just don't, I'm not really proud of that game. I don't think I played it very well. I did get a little bit lucky and then I threw it away even harder or threw kind of in the middle there. But I brought it back with the nice double roost play. Um, but, you know, that's just, I guess, the way it goes sometimes. So yeah, I think... Uh, there's a couple sequences for sure where I could have just had the opportunity to sack the uh, the Sylveon, get that thing out of the picture, and allow a free switch in to ride on. Also, I should just like I should be running the Calc. I did run the Calc, and I think I missed Calc. And I thought like this Drapion was banded for some reason based off of the knockoff damage to my uh, to my ride on, but that was just obviously not the not the case. And so I don't know what I was uh, what I was calcing <laughs> in that in that situation. Yeah, so you know, it is the way. It is the way. Uh, it is what it is. That's just the way it goes. I'm trying to say that, and uh, we can jump into into game two and see if I can close out the series here. Okay, so here is game two. This is another uh, Danny team used by Danny in NU Snake Draft. I think we did some coverage on both of these teams uh, in the video that we did together. So if you guys want to check that out, feel free. Um, you can probably get a little bit more in-depth look into the team building process. Um, so I'm, lo I'm lo loading up with this team. It's a Silvalley Ground, Stoys, Dragalogy, um, Shell Smash, Standard Dragalogy, Standard Zatu, uh, Curse, uh, Lax, and I think it's Stealth Rock, uh, Leftovers, Copperaja. So one thing I noticed from this team when I load it up is that it's very, very slow. Uh, base 95 is the fastest Pokemon on this team, so that does scare me considering I'm facing off against an Aerodactyl um, And I have nothing really to even outspeed and try to kill it. So that's very scary. On the other hand, uh, my Blastoise looks pretty good It doesn't really have much of a switch in Sylveon and Gudra uh, can take literally just one hit um, So I should be able to break through those hopefully uh, somewhat 
easily with just a little bit of pressure from the rest of my team. And at the same time, my curse uh, lax looks pretty decent. It can start setting up on like a Sylveon and just kind of steamroll from there. It doesn't really need to worry about too much. So those are a couple of things that I'm, I'm noticing from preview. The arrow is definitely scary. I know this thing is not like Rock's lead because my opponent has a Mudsdale. It's definitely Dragon Dance. Uh, and that thing is, uh, that can be very terrifying. So we'll have to see how exactly I handle that. I'm expecting this to be Trick Scarf, Rotom, Standard Sylveon, uh, a Muds, Standard Mudsdale, maybe Toxic Protect, uh, Escav, maybe SD. Uh, probably Toxic Protect, I would assume, and then like standard, uh, standard Expert Belt, Gudra. So Gudra is a little scary. You have to be kind of careful around that thing, as uh, I don't really have a great option against that. Um, but Copper plus like Ground Valley plus Stoys should be able to handle it somewhat. Um, so I'm going to lead off with Dragalogy. I'm going to lead off with Dra Dragalogy expecting potentially the Rotom Mo lead, uh, considering that Rotom Mo can like get a trick off pretty early. It would pressure most of the Pokemon on my team. Um, so I'm going to lead off with Dragalogy in that situation. My opponent actually ends up leading with the Scavalier, which as you can see is pretty annoying for my team as well. And I think Danny actually mentioned that a long time ago as well in our video. So I'm going to go hard into Silvalli on the knockoff here. And then I'm going to U-turn out of here. I'm trying to pivot into my Natu basically, as my opponent makes a nice double knockoff play and gets a lot of damage onto Zatu. Um, my Zatu does have Heat Wave, um, so I was trying to. I I didn't think it was that obvious, but I guess it was, as I'm just going to Heat Wave into the arrow. Uh, maybe not even obvious. I think my opponent just found this as an opportunity to just start, start setting up arrow, which makes sense. As uh, I'm going to switch out of here and go hard into Savali Ground. And I have to get rock slide damage off on this thing. I, I need to. There's only that's the only way I can break past this. So I'm able to get a good chunk off with that uh, rock slide. I'm gonna die to a second EQ, and I was like, oh boy. At this point, things aren't looking too good. So I'm gonna go hard into Stoice, and I'm gonna set up the shell smash right off the bat. I was like, you know what? I'm expecting a switch. My opponent probably can't knock me out from full. I'm setting up smash. I'm gonna start breaking past this team. So that's exactly what we're gonna see here. I'm gonna go for beam. Get rid of the Rotom. Out of the picture. Perfect. Gudra comes in. I can Ice Beam this thing. I know I can take any one hit. It's exactly what we're going to see. Take that pretty comfortably, actually. I'm pretty shocked. And I'm going to punch right through that thing. And now, uh, I don't have to worry I don't have to worry about a Trickmon. I don't have to worry about like a really large Draco Meteor at some point if my, uh, if my Snorlax gets low. And the rest of the team is basically Snorlax food. It doesn't really handle Snorlax well. So I can just go for a Surf on the Sylveon, have it knock me out, and I basically just go into Lax and I start winning. I'm just like, what can my opponent do? I set up a Curse. Um, even if they DD, I should be able to take Stone Edges relatively well. And I just have nothing to really be afraid of. I'm going to start fishing for Paras, because I was like, if I get a Para, like I'm in an even better spot. This Aerodactyl, I can definitely set up all over it. So you're going to see me fish for Paras for a little bit. Um, Maybe a little unoptimal on my end. I should probably just start going for curses, um, especially on the roost place, so I can start doing a little bit more damage. So that's what you're gonna eventually see. I was like, after like five or six of these, I was like, you know what? I'm not getting a para. It's whatever. Let me just start. <laughs> let me just start cursing up because this is just this is gonna be inevitable. So yeah, Stone Edge comes out this turn. Uh, I'm gonna go for Body Slam. And at this point, I was like, okay, my opponent has to roost on this turn, so I can curse very, very comfortably and uh, I'm still healing a good amount, and now I'm gonna be doing so much more damage and taking so much less from Stone Edge that my opponent has to go for a Dragon Dance. I can Body Slam again. Now I'm doing 50%. I get the para that I was hoping for, and as you can see, I'm at 85, 50%. I'm gonna knock it out with another Body Slam, and if you look at the, my opponent's team, like what can my opponent do to me? Literally nothing. Sylveon comes in, it's gonna do 30%, or not even 22% with Body Slam. Knock that thing out, no problem. Escav is gonna come in the next turn. I can just heat crash to kill that thing. Uh, if my opponent could, my opponent could flinch me down, and then then things could get a little rough. But even so, I should be able to win uh, with a combination of uh, Natu and Dragalgy. So my opponent is just gonna forfeit at this point, and Snorlax is gonna take the victory. So uh, I was pretty happy with that. I'm not gonna lie. I think that was a pretty clean, cleanly played game. I wasn't looking to win with Snorlax like from team preview. I was really just trying to. Uh, I just noticed that Blastoise can kind of just like cut through the team and I just took it as an opportunity right then and there to start putting the pressure on. I was like, you know what, I can start breaking past so much of my opponent's team with my, sto with my Stoice to the point that it's going to be so weak that Pokemon like Dragalogy uh, start just firing off uh, 
Draco Meteor, like no problem. Copper Roger becomes a big issue once uh, Gudra and Sylveon and Rotom are out of the picture, right? And I just kind of identified, oh wow, like Curselax just looks super good right now. Why don't I just go for it? It can just win the game. So uh, I think it worked out pretty well. I think I played game two pretty cleanly, um, even though it seemed kind of uh, like a tough spot to be in early on. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that's all I really want to say about that. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll leave it at that. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like. I would really appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Oh, uh, we are really, really close to 200 subscribers. And if you have any sort of questions, concerns, feedback, all those things, uh, feel free to put that in the comment section. But that's all I have to say. I hope everyone has a fantastic day. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Bye.